Uh, let me introduce uh, research studies performed using ground reaction force. So I will talk about three research studies. And the first study is about ground reaction force parameters during power snatch. And then the second study is about impulse during jumping performance. And the third study is about jump high calculation. Here is the first study. And the title of this study is Determining the best combination of ground reaction force parameters for maximizing power during the power snatch. Uh, let me define the power snatch first. The power snatch is that the barbell is lifted from the floor, receive it overhead with the knee and hip slightly flexed. And this is a continuous motion of a power snatch. And the power snatch is often treated as a vertical movement. So the vertical components have been primarily analyzed in previous studies. For example, uh, instantaneous peak vertical granulation force and the rate of vertical force development have been primarily analyzed in the previous studies. But the power snatch is not pure vertical movement. The horizontal movement is also observed during the power snatch. Uh, let me show you both uh, vertical and horizontal movements occurring during the power snatch. And then this is a trajectory of the bar. And then there are five events here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. And each number is corresponding with the number on this trajectory. And the vertical axis means the vertical displacement of the bar. And the horizontal axis means the horizontal displacement of the bar. So based on this graph, uh, you can see both horizontal movement and then vertical movement. That's why this power snatch is not pure a vertical movement. From a biomechanical point of view, it is likely that the vertical movement is predominantly governed by the vertical ground reaction force, whereas the horizontal movement is mainly dictated by the horizontal, horizontal uh, ground reaction force. Therefore, the horizontal ground reaction force parameters uh, need to be combined with the vertical ground reaction force parameters for more insightful data analysis. Okay, here is the research question of the study. Uh, does the horizontal movement significantly affect power output during the power snatch? Uh, to answer this question, the purpose of this study was to determine the best combination of ground reaction force parameters for maximizing power during the power snatch. Okay, participant. Uh, 10 skilled males uh, volunteered to participate in this study. And then they had at least few years of power snatch experience. And for trial condition, so one reputation maximum testing was performed one week prior to data collection. So one week later, they returned for actual data collection. And then they performed five power snatch trials with a 6% of 1RM. For experimental setting, so Vicon and two force plates were used for collecting the motion and granulation force respectively. And then a total of 59 markers were attached uh, throughout the participant's body. And then quantity to XP, the motion analysis software was used for subsequent data analysis. Uh, data extraction. So this error represents the granulation force from force plane number one. And then this error represents Granulation force from force plane number two. And then this study used actually the combined GRF, which is the summation of these two granulation forces. And this study also used the whole body center of mass of velocity. Uh, this slide shows how the granulation force parameters were extracted in this study. And this graph shows uh, whole body power, yellow line. And then vertical ground reaction force, black line, and the horizontal ground reaction force, the green line, uh, in relation to the power snatch movement here. And VGRF means instantaneous peak vertical ground reaction force. The circle here, so this point was used as a VGRF. And then HGRF, instantaneous peak horizontal ground reaction force, square here. So this point was used as HGRF. And then VFD, the rate of vertical force development, the solid red line here. So this slope was used as a VFD. And then HFD, so rate of horizontal force development, the started red line. So this slope was used as a HFD. And PW means power. 
x. So this point was used as a power. And then the power was calculated by the product of the vertical granulation force and the vertical bubble velocity. And horizontal center of pressure was also used as one of the granulation force parameters in this study. So this uh, black line represents the center of pressure trajectory. So horizontal axis means, again, okay, middle lateral center of pressure. The vertical axis means anterior posterior center of pressure. So this HCOP, okay, this is how this study collected HCOP. For statistical analysis, the multiple regression stepwise analysis was used to evaluate the prediction of power using granulation force parameters and also determine the best combination of granulation force parameters maximizing power during the power snatch. So VGRF, HGRF, VFD, HFD, and HCOP, these were used as independent variables, and the power was used as dependent variables. And this study used SPSS, and the significant level was set at 0.05. A multiple regression result. So we can use the model 3 here, as it shows the highest r square value. So in this model 3, uh, there are three significant parameters uh, affecting power during the power snatch. So VGRF and VFD and HCOP were identified as significant predictors of power during the power snatch. Most specifically, the increased VGRF and decreased VFD and HCOP would increase power in the power snatch. And central mass velocity result. Uh, let me explain this graph for you. Okay, black line represent the vertical center of mass velocity, and the yellow line represent the horizontal center of mass velocity. And then we have three events here, TR1, TR2, and Vmax. Here, TR represent the transition. So TR1 is instant when the vertical center of mass velocity goes down, and horizontal center of mass velocity goes up. And then we have another transition here, TR2. So TR2 is an instant when the vertical center of mass velocity goes back up, and the horizontal center of velocity goes back down. And Vmax is instant when the vertical center of mass velocity shows its highest value. So according to this graph, the Vh increased as Vv decreased between TR and TR2. And then VH decreased as VV increased between TR2 and the Vmax. The conclusion of this study. The vertical and horizontal movements occur simultaneously during the power snatch. And horizontal movement is inevitable as a counter movement before the second pull during the power snatch. But the horizontal movement needs to be minimized to reduce HCOP and VFD for maximizing power. Okay, here is the second study. Okay, this study is about impulse during jumping performance. And the title of this study is The Relative Net Vertical Impulse Determines Jumping Performance. Uh, let me define impulse first. Impulse is defined as the accumulated effects of force exertion over a period of time. An impulse in a linear kinetic variables, the impulse may be better able to predict jumping performance. And since impulse causes change in momentum, so we can use impulse momentum theorem, which is this equation. F delta T is equal to MVF minus MVI. Here F means mean force, and delta T means time interval, M means mass, the VF means final velocity, the VI means initial velocity. But if we apply this theorem to jumping motion, the final velocity will be the takeoff velocity, and the initial velocity will be equal to uh, 0 meter per second. So this theorem uh, can be used to determine the velocity of center of mass of the body at takeoff given that VI is equal to the 0 meter per second. Here we have a kinetic equation. V apex squared is equal to Vf squared plus 2ad. Here V apex means the center of mass velocity at apex, which is equal to 0 meters per second. 
because when the participant is at a plaque, there will be a stationary at this point. That's why velocity at this point uh, will be equal to uh, zero meters per second. And then here A represents gravitational acceleration, negative 9.81 meter per second squared. The here D is the center of mass displacement, is its own height. So if you go back to this uh, kinetic equation, so this one will be zero, and then this VF uh, will be coming from this theorem, but then we'll be able to calculate this D jump height. Uh, previous studies uh, showed that the net vertical horizontal impulse were positively related to spring velocity. And peak power and force show the positive correlation with the vertical uh, jump height. And then some studies uh, have examined the influence of the score depth on vertical uh, jump height. And the studies indicate that the score depth was shown to influence jump height significantly. However, no previous studies examined how the variations in squat depth affected the relative net vertical impulse and how it related to the difference in jump height. Okay, here the research question of this study. Do various squat depths affect the relative net vertical impulse and jump height in static jump and counter movement jump? Here SJ means static jump and CJ means counter movement jump here. Static jump and then counter movement jump here. And then the purpose of this study was to determine the effects of squat depth on relative net vertical impulse and jump height in SJ and CJ. Participant uh, 10 college aged males uh, volunteered to participate in this study. That they had at least two years of jumping experience and for trial conditions. A series of uh, static jump and counter movement jump was performed in a randomized order. And then different depths of 0 0.15, 0 0.30, 0 0.45, 0 0.60, 0 0.75 meters, and self selected depths were used in this study. And then participants held the plastic bar across the upper back to restrict any arm movement. Uh, for data collection, uh, one force play was used. Then two linear position transistors uh, were attached on the bar. Uh, this is for calculating the vertical and horizontal displacement. Uh, for data analysis, uh, peak force, peak velocity, peak power, and jump height were measured. And peak force uh, was measured as a maximal force uh, reached during the concentric phase. And peak velocity was measured as a change in displacement over time. And peak power determined as force multiplied by the velocity and jump height was determined as difference between the max and initial displacement. A relative net vertical impulse was calculated by dividing a net vertical impulse by body mass. The here we have the force time graph, okay, force and time. Here force means net force, which is a granulation force minus body weight. And then this means net vertical impulse, so the initial time and the takeoff time. And then this is uh, how we can calculate the net vertical impulse. The time integral of net force will give us net vertical impulse. And then this one causes a change in linear momentum. So once you get in this net vertical impulse, so by dividing this value by the body mass, we will be able to get the relative net vertical impulse. And then this equation uh, can be solved for uh, takeoff velocity okay, to obtain this value. Uh, for statistical analysis, uh, independent t-tests were used to determine the differences between the relative vertical impulse and the performance variables of each step. And also Pearson's product correlations were used to determine if any relationships existed. And then this study used SPSS, and then the signature level was set at 0.05. T-test result, increasing squat depth corresponded to a decrease in peak force and an increase in jump height and relative net vertical impulse for both SJ and CJ. Correlation result, across all depth, the relative net vertical impulse was positively correlated to jump height. 
the positive correlations here for both a static jump and then counter movement jump. And of course, all the peak force was negatively correlated to jump height for both uh, static jump and counter movement. As you can see here, you can see the negative correlation between jump height and peak vertical force. The conclusion of this study, the relative net vertical impulse can be used to assess and improve vertical jump performance regardless of the squat depth. And peak force may not be the best measure to assess a vertical jump performance. Uh, here is the last GRF study. And this study is about the jump height calculation. And then the title of this study is Analysis of Standing Vertical Jump Using a Force Platform. A force plat is excellent teaching aid in physics classes and laboratories. And we can get the granulation force from the force plate in the form of a force time graph. Then we are able to calculate acceleration velocity and displacement of center mass using numerical integration of force time graph of granulation force. And the purpose of this study was to show how a force plate analysis of standing vertical jump may be used in teaching the kinematics and dynamics of the one-dimensional motion. To achieve this purpose, uh, the three jump height calculations were compared in this study. Uh, there are three methods of articulating jump height in this paper. And the first one is the flight time method. This is the most straightforward way and determine the time span in the R1 phase and then use the kinematic equation under constant acceleration condition. And the second uh, method is the impulse momentum theorem method. This is more accurate than the flight time method. And this one uses the force time graph with the numerical integration. And then the last method is the work energy theorem method. And this one uh, uses the force displacement graph using numerical integration to calculate jump height. Uh, this paper first introduced how to calculate acceleration, velocity, and displacement of center of mass of the body using granulation force. Uh, let me explain free body diagram first here. Fg means the vertical granulation force, and W means the body weight, and then V means center of mass velocity, and the R means center of mass position relative to the origin. And we can calculate this acceleration using Newton's second laws of motion, which is Fg equal to ma. And after that, uh, we will be able to calculate velocity by doing time integral of acceleration. But since this time integral of acceleration, this one does not give the instantaneous velocity, but give us change in velocity during the time range. So we need to know the initial velocity, which is typically equal to the zero. After that, uh, we'll be able to calculate position by doing the time integral of velocity calculated. Then add the initial the position which is center of mass of body while standing. So then we'll be able to calculate the result of the position. Uh, this study also introduced how to calculate jump height using the principle of mechanical energy conservation, which is this equation. So this is the kinetic energy at takeoff. This is potential energy at takeoff. It's the kinetic energy at apex, and the potential energy at apex. And this part is Mechanical energy at takeoff, and this part total will be mechanical energy at apex. And then these two sets must be equal to each other based on these principles. That since the velocity at this apex okay, will be equal to zero, this one can be gone. Then this whole this principle can be solved for uh, jump height, which is uh, h apex minus h takeoff. So according to this equation, as long as we know the velocity at takeoff, we'll be able to calculate the jump height. As I mentioned earlier, there were three methods introduced in this paper for calculating the jump height. And the first one was the flight time method. In free flight, so we can use this kinetic equation. Here VL means velocity at landing. Velocity at this point, and then V 
TO, velocity at takeoff, and then G means again gravitational acceleration. The TL means time at landing, and then TTO means time at takeoff. But here, if we assume the height of jumper center of mass at landing is the same as at takeoff, if then BL will be equal to negative VTO. So I have the negative here because the direction is mostly be opposite. If then this equation can be solved for the VTO. And then, as I mentioned in the previous slide, as long as we know the velocity at takeoff, we will be able to calculate the jump height. But as you can see in this figure, uh, a jumper does not always have exactly the same body posture at the instant of landing as at the instant of takeoff. Therefore, this method is likely to overestimate the true jump height. Uh, the second way to calculate jump height is the impulse momentum theorem method. And this theorem tells us that the impulse causes a change in the momentum of the body. And the impulse is calculated by the integral of force over time. So as you went over previously, uh, this area is a net vertical impulse. And then by doing the time integral of this net force, okay, this net force, we will be able to calculate the net vertical impulse, which will give us the change in the momentum of the body. And then again here, net force means the vertical uh, granular force minus the body weight. So that this whole equation can be solved for the VTO, velocity at takeoff. Again, as long as we calculate this one, we will be able to calculate jump height. And the last way to calculate jump height is work energy theorem method. And this theorem tells us that the work causes a change in the kinetic energy of a body. And the work is calculated by the integral of force over displacement. So by doing the integral of force with respect to displacement, we'll be able to get a change in the kinetic energy of the body. And this part, red part here, shows us how work causes the change in kinetic energy of a body. So we can use this kinetic equation for that. The final velocity squared is equal to e of velocity squared plus 2ad. So again, a means the gravitational acceleration and t means jump height. And this can be rearranged like this. And then based on the definition of the mechanical work, work is equal to force time displacement. And then force is equal to ma based on Newton's second laws of motion. And then we got AD here, A times D, AD. So that you can insert this one right here. If then it will be like this. Therefore, work is equal to final kinetic energy minus initial kinetic energy, which is change in kinetic energy. So that this equation can be solved for uh, V, TO, again, velocity takeoff. If then we'll be able to calculate jump height. Uh, the conclusion of this study, the flight time method. And uh, this method is the simplest to perform. However, this method overestimates the true flight height. And then the impulse momentum theorem method. This is the most accurate. And it is very important in this method to correctly select the initial instant. And then the work energy theorem method. This is the least reliable method, and this is highly sensitive to correct selection of the initial instance.